Fred Barber! Hello. I've got issues. Uh, sometimes I hold doors open for people who are clearly too far away just to watch them run. I turned 30 over lockdown. It's rubbish. I feel like my 30s is just a diet version of my 20s. Like my 20s was all ecstasy and weed and my 30s is just antidepressants and nitol. <laughs> It's got some advantages though, I used to really care what people think, but since I've been on the happy pills, I just don't give a fuck. Like, I feel like the guy I once saw walking down Kilburn High Road with 24 cans of stewed steak. Um, you know, it's, uh, I've always been special though, you know. Uh, not in an X Factor way, more in a sorry, this school just doesn't have the resources. <laughs> I've got a condition called dyspraxia, which, uh, if you haven't heard of it, is a coordination issue um, that comes with absolutely no economic, social or parking benefits whatsoever. <laughs> Employers won't really recognise it. Romantic partners won't make any allowances for it. It's a bit like being Irish in the world of racism. Um, but it's, it's also like I got, um, got a lot of abuse at school, you know, because I got a coordination disorder, you know, I couldn't play the national sport. People would be like, you know, hey Fred, why don't you want to play football? Are you gay or something? And I'd be like, why? Do you think I'd be tempted if you were more attractive? <laughs> so satisfying that, isn't it, when you come up with what you should have said a full two decades after the event? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's also a, a weird thing about having a coordination disorder. You know, people, people just assume I'm off my tits the whole time. <laughs> which is awkward, because I'm actually a recovering alcoholic and cocaine fiend. <laughs> There's some stuff I miss about that, some stuff I don't miss, like... I don't miss feeling like cash points are taking the piss out of me. <laughs> Do you know when you go up to the cash point, it would be like, do you require an advice slip? <laughs> do you really think I'd be pulling 80 quid out of my overdraft at 3 a.m. on a Tuesday morning <laughs> if I was even remotely receptive to advice? And beyond that, who do they think they are offering it anyway, you know? Because these days when I say I've given up, people are like, oh, how do you do it? Do you find God? Do your parents stage an intervention? Do you go rehab? Just like, no, I was just at the cash point one night. <laughs> Nat West just gave me this heartfelt receipt. And if there's anything I know about banks, it's their insatiable desire to do what's right, so... <laughs> Change man. Uh, looking back, I'd say I was more of a part-time druggy, full-time alky. Um, it's not even because I like alcohol more, it's because I never stood in the pissing rain for four hours waiting for a six-pack of Stella. <laughs> So I guess what I'm saying is, looking back, I think I had the potential to become a full-time druggie, but sadly, I just never had the work ethic. <laughs> um, but how I got involved in that, you know, I, di I didn't have a bad childhood or anything. I, I just got a very addictive personality. That, and I also believe as a straight, white, middle-class male, you've got to create your own obstacles in life. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, 
Um, it's had some weird consequences, though. Like, I'm going through, like, six litres of sparkling water a day, like, as a surrogate alcohol, you know? Like, it's a weird thing to show off about, but I say I'm, like, the most hydrated man in Britain. Uh, moving on. Um, don't you think anyone who says gay people can't get into heaven is thinking of an entirely different nightclub? <laughs>